Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Governor Sawalu inspects Red Line Rail Project, Governor Sawalu inspects ongoing Lagos Badagri Corridor cleanup, and State Government Commission's 15 classroom block in Ogumbo School. Let's begin with the announcement from Governor Babajide Sawalu on zero tolerance to commercial activities along the Red Rail Line. Now, Governor Sawalu made this comment during an assessment tour of the 37-kilometer-long Lagos Rail Mass Transit Project and assures of completion before the end of this year. Governor Babajide Sawalu is Deputy Kadri Amzat, officials of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, and some cabinet members kick off the inspection of the rail line corridor at Agbadu, where the federal government also has a station. When the station comes to line, we'll have the facilities there. We're going to fence up this whole area. All this area. We are now the passengers so that we can enter. This is the Our own station is for that. I know, I know, I know. It takes us time to inspect the ongoing project at the boundary with Ogun State, where the red line terminal is being built 100 meters away, and the people were happy to see him. Next stop is the juice station. We moved around the facilities to see what has been put in place. The escalators, turnstiles, access points already in place for operation. Yeah, how do we work there? Yeah. From Iju to Agege Red Line Terminal, where the station has been completed, with furniture being fitted to prepare them for operation, and the governor wants traders to stop all forms of business activities on the rail tracks. The brand new Targo train coaches purchased by the Lagos State Government is aligned at Ebute Meta within the premises of the Nigerian Railway Corporation. Governor Sonwolu says it has the capacity to take over 1,000 passengers per trip. We believe that we're still on track, you know, to see how we can finish before the end of this year. Um, and that's what we're committed to. Um, we will work tirelessly around the clock to see how that will happen, especially if we can be very hard on enforcement, enforcement to ensure that we can preserve intruders on the rail corridor. And because this rail track is at grid, meaning it's not elevated that we have on the blue line, so we have a lot of work to do to ensure that people are not in any form on the rail track. Significantly, we have walled off most of the rail track using the wire mesh, but you will notice that at some point, right, we probably need to go back and do proper concrete wall because with the wire mesh, they have started even breaking them and, and, and opening up. So we have taken a view and a decision that we will, especially maybe 500 meters to almost a kilometer, you know, to the train platform itself, we we'll probably need to do concrete wall to be able to secure passengers to be able to secure the citizens from themselves, you know, against safety, you know, that will be happening um, on that rail corridor. Regarding the passenger capacity, um, I'm sure if you look at the strength and the length, they will take not less than a thousand passengers at once, not less than a thousand passengers. So if you have a thousand passengers, they will be able to take them. If you have a thousand one hundred, a thousand two hundred, you might also be able to squeeze it because they also have facility for standing. Because they are metro trains, they are very short distance. So in 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, people don't have a problem. Just And they are air-conditioned. Just standing for 15 minutes and get to where you are. Journeys that either would have taken you an hour, an hour and a half, you'll be there in 15, 20 minutes max. So people really will not mind. And it has, has been done everywhere in the world. It has provision for, for standing. And so it will take a large number, minimum of 1,000 
you know, um, at, at any point in time. Um, regarding the blue line, people must stay right on all the platform. When you come on the platform, don't just stand where the lift or the, the staircase takes you to. That's not the only place where the door is going to be. The door is going to open all right down the platform. So you can walk down, you can walk up, you know, just spread yourself on the platform. Once you spread yourself on the platform, you will have spaces when they finally come and the doors will open and you'll be able to go. But the other lesson that we need to also teach our citizens is that, as it's done everywhere in the world, you must allow passengers that are on board to come down first before you go in. He also says Lamata is already making plans for the green and purple rail line and appeals to the federal government to support the state in order to complete other rail infrastructure. The seamless carry card that we have on the blue line will also be implemented on the red line. It will be the same uh, mode of payment, so you don't need any other means of payment, you know, other than your carry card that you have, that you are using on your BRT, you are using on your lag ferry, you are using on your blue rail, which you will eventually also use on the red rail. You know, so all of that are part of the final components that we're doing. We're installing CCTV cameras. Um, we're talking to vendors. Massive commercial spaces that you see. So what you see in places all over the world, a train station is usually a place of congregation. It's usually a, a terminal for citizens to commune, to interact, and to engage. So that's why you see that the train stations are actually very big. I dare say, from the history that we have, that the Ikeja station will be the biggest train station in the whole of Africa. You can see our red trains right behind me. You know, so what we have come to do is to look at how ready they are. And we have conversation, you know, around buying uh, more rolling stock. But, you know, it comes with a lot of fine funding and a lot of financing. And we're trying to be very creative on how, you know, um, we, we engage that. In fact, we're having conversations on the green and the, is it green and purple? They said green and purple line. We're having conversations, you know, around it. You know, I need to also mention this. Most nations that are building real infrastructure, it's usually, usually taken up by their national government. We're about the only one that is carrying this burden all on our own. So if the federal government, uh, if they support us, we'll take their support so that we can do these things a lot more quicker and faster. So it's within the budgetary constraint that we have, you know, and to do other things. Ikeja Mega Station is said to be the largest terminal in Africa, and the state government assures residents of opening Yaba and Ikeja flyover this month to ease traffic congestion within the metropolis.